Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Productivity 2000 Series PLC Online Programming. Now the Productivity Suite software allows us to modify our existing program and execute the new code without stopping the scanning of the PLC. This is referred to as online programming or editing. We change the ladder logic code and when we save it to the PLC, the current scan of the PLC is held until the new code is written into the unit. It then releases a scan and the new program starts to execute. This happens in milliseconds so our process can, can continue to operate. We will be taking our existing start stop circuit from last time and add a jog input using online programming. Changing the program online is a common method of programming. The documentation will also be changed during this online program change. Let's get started. Detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So up on my screen here, we are currently connected to our PLC. Um, and you'll see my file, my CPU project status is up to 8. And runtime transfer, it says it is available because they two, the two of them match. You can also see that I'm online up here and we're in run mode. So the first thing we will do is take a look at our um, run comments right here. And if we double click on that run comment, we're just going to change that run comment and we're just going to add the slash jog. And we'll hit OK. So now it comes up there as well as if I look at my um, display here, it says here that there's something been changed. And now you'll notice that my project file status is not saved and we're, we're project um, we're out of date with what's in the computer versus what's in the PLC. You'll also notice that I stopped monitoring my IO now. So now let's um, include a ne next rung. So what we'll do is insert a rung after that first one. And we'll just include the one rung. And what we'll do is we'll put our jog in here. So we'll use the uh, normally open contact. And we will call up our the next available bit, which would be um, digital input 133. And we'll just scroll down here. We'll find 133. There it is. And we will just say OK. And that puts it right on that line. And our output, what we'll use is our coil. And we'll just call this jog uh, work bit. And we will say OK. And it comes up with our defined tags. And we're going to leave everything as the, as the same. Our comment here will actually be internal uh, tag work bit. And then we'll just hit OK for that. And our program now is looking like this. The next thing we have to do is actually add that information into our existing top circuit here. And the first thing we'll do is add a column in here. Insert column. And what you'll notice is now our motor now over is over here at five on our output. So right here, what we'll do is just delete this wire. So we will hit delete and we'll hit that column. So we're back to our four columns again. And now we have that inserted here. So there is our motor. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that um, we don't have the jog switch on this. So let's go to our normally closed contact and we will put our jog in here. Jog uh, work bit. We'll hit OK. And we also want to put our jog underneath here. So we'll just hit our control down arrow and control over. And what we'll put it in here is our actual jog, which was our 
bit that we, we wanted, which is right here. So it's the DI. 133. We'll hit OK. Now, that is our jog bit, but let's go over to our tag database. And what we'll do is we will put in that jog bit right here. And we'll just hit jog. So we'll just modify that tag database. And once we're done that, we just turn that off. And now you'll see that we have our jog here. So our program looks like everything's working now. Let's just go over to our physical hardware that we have here. And when we look at our hardware, you will see that our program is currently acting exactly the way it should. We have our start then if we had it starts it starts the motor we'll have our stop which now stops the motor and you'll see that my jog my third one really doesn't do anything whatsoever so what I'm going to do is leave that jog on and what we'll do is we will now do the online transfer so the first thing we'll do is hit this, um, well, first of all, we'll save the project. So let's hit save. And when we do, it saved that project for us, but now our symbol's changed. And our symbol's changed because this now is basically saying to us, we haven't transferred over to the CPU itself. And you see my project status now is saved, and but our CPU is still out of date because it has the old program, our, our start and start. So we'll transfer this over. And I've kept that jog on, so as soon as that jog goes on, we should see the motor actually turn on. So here it's asking me what type of transfer do we actually want? And we have two choices. We have the runtime transfer, which is what we we're going to be doing. That's the online programming itself. Or we have the stop mode transfer. So which actually takes your PLC into program mode, transfers the program, and then it allows you then to start the program once again. So we're going to do the runtime transfer. It will then transfer that over. And you'll notice that, first of all, our jog bit came on right away because that's what that's what the, the, uh, the program is actually doing. The jog bit's on, so the output comes on. If I turn the jog bit off, then the output then turns off. So the jog actually goes with the output. And all my other functions still work. There's my start and my stop. Or if I have my start and I have my jog, it remains on. If I turn off the jog, it turns off that motor. So having the ability to actually do online programming or online editing is very functional or very, um, is required when doing programming. And it helps very much in troubleshooting and looking at your logic. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free eBooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button to get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.